shoulder, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Let's Roleplay Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, Dusk's Tale. We are here with Dusk and Bridget, back in the orchard, and well, I have managed to update the game just recently, which has uh, changed a few things. We have items that are now stored within various containers, our army pants and our backpack for example. We can actually open those up to see what's in them, but we can access them just in our regular inventory as well. We can kind of see that the, the, what we have stored in those various containers, which means that when we're looting things, we'll have to look in the containers to see what is awaiting inside. There might be a few errors that pop up throughout this episode just while things kind of get ironed out. And speaking of iron, that is what we intend to work on today. However, for us to be able to work on iron and to get our metal working up and running, we're going to have to have the necessary equipment to do that. I have looked through our crafting abilities and we're kind of lacking in the welding department at the moment and I'm pretty sure it's because our welders went out. We do have the acetylene torches. Unfortunately, we're mostly out of acetylene. I think we do have some in those tanks there, but I don't think it's going to be enough for us to do everything that we want to do. Let's just have a look. Okay, they're empty, so yes, we 100% need to do this. <laughs> and do this is heading out back towards the fire truck to be able to have a bit of a look to see what's there, because I do have with loot on here, and that makes me think that we did actually leave some of our supplies behind. There is still a strong chance that I have left other things in our little boat over here as well. This is the issue with me not taking notes, which is a bad call on my behalf. So it's something that I'm going to start doing once again. It's important to do in Cataclysm, otherwise you will just lose track of everything. And so that's my plan to start things off today, is for us to take this quick journey through the fields here past Newington and Corinth and head down this track here. We'll be able to get a bit of a look at this bridge that was all mined up in the previous episode as well. So with that, we are going to head out on the road and yes, occasionally as we do approach some containers and things, we will have some errors, but uh, well, Bridget, strap yourself in there um, and I hope you can actually strap yourself in. I assume that that is a working safety belt seat. We can hope and we'll go ahead and spin ourselves around and start heading off in the correct direction. And so I think we're going to pick up with Dusk once we make it to that bridge. Yeah, just kind of heading down this little highway here. So I will see you all in a moment. Okay, we are approaching that bridge and we're going to start to slow down as we do. And yep, sure enough, we can see the splattered remains of dead that I believe have walked on some of the unfortunate, uh, unfortunately placed landmines. It looks like there weren't turrets here, but probably rather soldiers that were manning this bridge. I kind of like it. And I do like that bridges are like that because it means it's going to be like one of those focal points that, uh, well, you struggle to cross. I mean, the smaller ones, like the one that's all the way up here by home, I can understand those not being mined, but these larger bridges, I kind of kind of like that. We do have a zombie scientist just out towards the south, which is a little strange to see one just kind of lingering. But I think it's because of these bodies that are down here, which means that maybe they could be scientists. Well, they did seem to have some scientific interests, but we're not seeing any science ID cards or anything like that. We could stop to take that poor fool down, but really, we are on a mission. We have a destination, and we're going to keep flying towards that. Um, I am tempted to head back towards where we destroyed our last electric vehicle as well, because there's a strong chance that there could be something interesting there still. I think we got everything that we needed from that, but... Um, yeah, I can't be 100% sure. I think that most of that stuff is going to be in the fire truck. And we have some soldier ants, which we're going to try to avoid as much as possible. Their ant hill is just over here to the west. So we should be able to just head all the way south here. What are we going past? This is a fishing pond. Ah, huh, how nice. Well, I guess if we ever need to avoid those ants because right now they aren't hostile towards us. They just seem to just be, you know, minding their own business. 
We've got a lot of crows. Okay, and we've got a boomer. So there are still some that are alive back in the town. We took down a great number of dead in and around this area with our uh, infrared goggles and our bow at night. Unfortunately, the bow isn't as useful as it once was. Uh, but it might get to be in time. With metalworking, we can make better arrows, and so, yeah, we have a chance there. And well, we can actually make a better bow, too. And so we've arrived at that little evac shelter we were staying at for a time, and our fire truck, there it is. So, the question will be, was this journey worthwhile? Well, it didn't really take us long to get here, so just knowing... <laughs> Just figuring out what we actually have access to here, I think is going to be worth it. So, first of all, we'll start with this container here. What do we have stowed in there? An oxygen tank. Nice. <laughs> I'm imagining that's our actual stuff. Okay, it is. And so, what are we looking at here? We've got a USP, we've got some magazines. Uh, the electric jackhammer, very nice. I'm glad we came back for that. Really, there isn't too much else. There is the data card, the mine splicing kit, and our firefighter gear, which is... <laughs> I don't know how useful it'll actually be because, yeah, the issue that we've run into with heat is that heat is still the issue, not so much fire. So I'm probably going to leave that equipment there if I'm being honest, but we'll go ahead and take these batteries. We'll take the splicing kit and the data card, the MREs, because why the hell not? It is free food. The drop leak pouches, we don't need to worry about. The two-way radio, if we give one of those to Bridget, we might actually be able to make use of that. So, sure. The electric jackhammer, of course, and we'll take those rounds... As for these magazines, we'll take this one because it's got ammunition in it, and uh, yeah, we're not actually we're not going to worry about the rest. So, not amazing so far. Let's see if there's anything else that we have. Uh, yeah, just rubbish really by the looks of things. Uh, we do have an accessory pack and a dessert pack there, and that's yeah the equipment that we put together. Uh, we do have quite a few short ropes. They are quite heavily damaged, but yeah, unfortunately, no welding equipment. Because I'm pretty sure that most of it... Yeah, we moved around anyway. I am going to go and have a look at the vehicle that's in town. We're going to take Bridget with us because I think we'll have a little bit of a fight ahead of us, more than likely. Uh, we'll just go ahead and store these things in the boot for now. So we'll go ahead and shift just into the square here, moving those all across. Let's close this up so that uh, no one wanders into it. Then Bridget, we are going to have a walk into town. Let's just see. You are retracted at the moment. Let's make sure that we extend you back out. Excellent. We're ready to go there. We have our M4A1 should we need it. And uh, we are ready to roll back into this town. So that's quite a big save. It did just update a whole heap of uh, cells as we drove on through. But yes, we'll make our way up towards here. Bridget hopefully not attacking any of the giant ants. She, she shouldn't because they're not hostile towards us. But that zombie child certainly is. So we're going to go up in the direction of them. And um, yeah, we'll start to get to work. We can see that we're a little bit faster than Bridget. Just overall. We feel remorse. I suppose we could let Bridget kill that child. But you know. It would also upset them as well. We're warm and tired. Actually, maybe it wouldn't. And yeah, so this is this is the the real mess that we created when we came through here and used grenades and just all sorts. Apparently, we did miss that skeletal dog, but that's okay. We'll allow that to charge towards us, and uh, we'll make quick work of that once it gets up in our face. Bridget probably going to help us out there as well. Misses, but with one crack on the head. It uh, falls to pieces. Actually, yeah, no, it was uh, it was Bridget that did that there. Excellent. Watch out for the tough zombie. Okay, I do see it over there. Thank you, Bridget. Let's start to move in the direction of our vehicle. And the remaining zombies that are here, which really there aren't that many. So towards the tough one first. Let's just stand in position. <laughs> Very nice, Bridget. Yeah. She can really really handle herself we've got quite a few that are coming out of this house here but um yeah i'm confident that these two are going to be able to uh do a number on them <laughs> good work team excellent bridget love your work okay let's just see we've got one more inside the house here 
All right. Calm down. I think we had an... Oh, we've got, we've got quite another few. So, yeah, we will stop here. We'll go back over towards Bridget, just that we're all kind of fighting together. We don't want to be fighting in the doorway here. Apparently, I can't climb out the window. Oh, because we were grabbed. That is a great scream, and I believe that was the Shrieker. Um, fantastic sound work there. It's great. For those of you who don't know, we are actually using a new sound pack, which you can find in the description. It is an amalgamation of a number of different packs. Yep, that's quite a bit of noise. Well, if they didn't know we were here, they certainly do now. Do you want to pop on through this window? All right, come on. A little bit further. There we go. Got you. Over towards this group. Just take a step. There we go. Now, we have one more out there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead here. So we're hearing Bridget call, saying that she wants to go ahead and smash them as well. Uh, we also want to do some smashing of our own. But yeah, we're going to make sure that all of these folks remain dead. We've spotted a Rottweiler, apparently. And it's far enough away. All right, let Bridget do some of that work and then move in ourselves. Yeah, together. <laughs> they take care of this group very quickly. Let's just keep on smashing up these bodies. If anyone else is around here, they will appear. Zombie spotted. Hello, zombie. Head our way, please. We are just one, two hitting this, though. That's, uh... That's pretty good. <laughs> Bridget, an absolute monster as well. Love your work. Uh, we've already taken the ammunition from there, I see. Alright, let's make sure that we uh, smash the rest of these. And it looks like we do have some more friends that will be heading in here. Bridget, I am yeah, confident that you can take care of that just fine. Yeah, so there were quite a few more in the town, it would seem. But um, they really really didn't stand much of a chance. We are lucky that the dead in this area haven't evolved too far yet, because while Bridget is a badass, she could still be taken down rather quickly, uh, given the right kind of scenario. So, this is our old vehicle. I believe we've taken most of the equipment from there, if not all, but I will be kind of just double checking that, because I think that on the back is our vehicle welding rig. Yes, it is. Okay, good. So we came back for a reason. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> there was a reason. And I think, yeah, is that where our motor came out? I think it probably is back here. Quite possibly. It was around this area here that it uh, completely was destroyed. That's what the aluminium ingots are, which we might as well take because we are about to start metalworking in. Oh, hi. Looks like we're going to have a little bit more of a workout first. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I think Bridget has been, um, yeah, dying to do some killing. <laughs> so we're going to let them start to roam towards us. And it is a decent amount of dead, but it's nothing... That I don't think we can handle. Bridget, don't run too far into the fray. Hmm? Making very quick work now. God damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the two of them, the two of them can do stuff. It looks like a lot of them died here, but we might not have, um, yeah. We might not have properly smashed them. Or maybe this is just where they started to congregate. It's possible. Ignore the zombie. We're all right. I think there are others around. We don't want to save and quit. <laughs> we heard some footsteps. Okay. Hi there. Actually took a few to take you down. I got there in the end. Is that string? My gosh. It's sinew. You can stay. We don't need no sinew. We are going to make sure that the rest of this group here stay nice and dead. Bridget is assisting us with that as well. Where she can. Thank you very much. And we have a nice bloodied road. Fantastic. Let's start to head back up towards our vehicle. Grab the things that we need. These ingots. How heavy are you? You're not actually that heavy. Aluminium, for the most part, is quite light. Or aluminum. This is going to happen a lot. <laughs> 
Um, so, let's have a look at the vehicle. Um, ideally, we'll be able to take that off. What do we need to be able to take it off? Hopefully, yeah, this is something that we can kind of deal with. We might actually be able to remove the um, swappable storage batteries because we have Bridget here with us. We might have enough strength. Now, for that, we can just take it off. Fantastic. Yeah, we're assisted. So we only, you only need four when it's assisted. That's good. We're going to ignore further distractions. We're going to let Bridget just protect us as we do this. Fantastic. Let's have a look at these swappable storage batteries. Do we have enough to be able to do it? Yes, we do. We have enough strength to be able to haul this thing out. Brilliant. That's really, really good. So this one is damaged. Don't think we're going to take that. I mean, we could. It's not draining, so sure, we'll go ahead and take it. Do we want to try and take this off now? The swappable storage battery case? I think so. It's going to take 13 minutes. It's worth it. It's just a little bit of, um, yeah, moving of bolts, etc. The solar panels will take as well. They're still in good condition. I think I originally thought we were just going to, um, you know, fix this vehicle. Unlikely. The recharging station, we'll go ahead and take... Oh, we've actually got one back at home. Eh, we don't need it. We're fine. Take the solar panel. I think that's all the solar panels that were on this. But we'll just kind of double check that. Recharging station, trunks, etc. Yeah, I mean, really, it's just missing a... Uh, <laughs> just missing an engine. <laughs> but building an engine out on the road... Not the easiest thing to do, surprisingly enough. Let's see, what can we actually fit into our bag? Obviously, yeah, the solar panels are going to be quite heavy. The storage batteries are ridiculously heavy. So, we can not carry any of that stuff, but we can haul it. Now, it is quite a ways to haul it, so what we're probably going to end up doing is just driving our vehicle up to this point. I mean, we drove up to here in the first place, so I think this is the way that we're going to go. Are we going to go back that same way? I think it's safer to go back the direction that we just drove. I mean, it is the fastest way. So let's see if we can kind of meet that halfway. Yeah, let's just make it to this intersection here just by dragging these things along the ground. As you can see, it does take a while. Thankfully, while there aren't things around, it's easier. We've spotted a Rottweiler and we'll let uh, Bridget go ahead and yes, deal with that. Okay, we're nearly there. And we'll go ahead and stop here. So, we'll bring our vehicle up and towards that. We'll see how we fare. A necessary journey. Because now we don't need to worry about building a vehicle welding rig. Which is what I was going to try and do and attach it to our little food cart that we've got. Let's just wait for Bridget. And we'll go ahead and close it up. Excellent. Let's reverse on out of here and drive on up. To where all that equipment is and we need to be careful not to drive over all the equipments because um yeah that would be the worst thing for us to do right now <laughs> so we'll go ahead and slow down just as we make our way through here uh we can just drive over all these bodies as well but um yeah you know what what the hell let's do it okay and we're just going to start to turn just plonk our vehicle right here go ahead and stop Stop driving. Okay. Yeah, Bridget, you can jump out that way. And we're just going to go ahead and haul all the stuff over towards here. Unlikely that we're just going to be able to put it in the same one. We'll start to move things across. Uh, yeah, we can, we, we can fit some things. So we'll go back to that and we'll start to move that up to here. That takes up a whole heap of space. But we have enough to fit everything in. Fantastic. So that's everything there. It's what we want to see. Bridget, go ahead and jump on in. I could tell Bridget to start closing doors behind her, but um, for now, I think we're okay. All right, let's start rolling up back towards home. And you know what? We are going to go back. And we're going to go to the left here. Because we don't want to be driving our vehicle through hordes of dead. We made that mistake last time. It's why that vehicle got stranded here in the first place. So, <laughs> yeah. Better to be safer. And just drive around all this mess. And then rejoin the road up here. And then, as we saw, it's pretty much a... Well, it's not a straight shot, but it's a shot back home. <laughs> just heading back up and onto that main road up here taking a right and then we just follow that 
as far as we can until we reach the field that'll lead back to the orchard. And so with that, we are going to advance a little bit of time. So I will see you all on the other side. And we have made it back home. And as you might be able to see, we do have a damaged windscreen. We had one small encounter with a rock. But <laughs> overall, the vehicle is still in really good condition. We're going to go ahead and stop this thing right here. And let's just have a little bit of a look and see how that uh, damage is looking up here. So, yeah, there's a damage to the door along the side. And uh, a little bit of damage to the wheel. Nothing that we can't fix, though. So that shouldn't be an issue for us. We're going to go ahead, uh, make sure that the handbrake is definitely pulled. And we're going to stop driving the vehicle. Jump on off here. Uh, now, we might need... We might need a vehicle rig or we might need a rig to be able to actually um, attach this. I'm not sure if we need to weld this or if we can just kind of, you know, pull it on somehow. I guess we'll we'll find that out in a moment, won't we? We're going to start moving this stuff down here. Uh, close that up. We do have quite a few solar panels that are kind of just hanging around at this stage. Uh, but yeah, if we can get a vehicle welding rig attached to this as well, that'd be pretty cool. I think we should be able to put it here with the mini fridges. Maybe. I, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But I think having this kind of maneuverable little rig like this is going to be worthwhile. So we could probably try and see if we could... Um, yeah, we might be able to get another 10 inch wheel and attach it onto this or even just put the casters on one end because I think we do have some caster wheels as well. Let's just have a look at it first of all and just see if we might have a chance to install anything like that. We can install another solar panel if we wish there. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like we can. We can install a small storage battery, which is, you know, it's really good. It's going to be more power for this thing. So, yeah, sure, we'll go ahead and install that one there. That one is draining. So, yeah, no, we'll go ahead and remove that one. Um, <laughs> let's see. Is that this one here? Okay, let's go ahead and pick up that small storage battery. And that we're just going to go and put over here, just so it's out of the way. Uh, vehicle parts, there we go. Yeah, just leave that where it is. Uh, can we install another one? I guess it's not small storage. That's why we'd have to install something else first, like the actual carrier. Yeah, because these are just small, small storage batteries. We've got proper storage batteries now, so that's pretty cool. Um, right, so we need to have a look at installing something on here. We can just do wiring, but just dragging stuff around is a bit, yeah, it'd probably be better for us if we use a frame. We do have a steel frame here. I'm not sure why we can't attach it. It might be that the stuff is just in the way. So we'll go and uh, just haul it over in that direction for now. And we'll just grab you and just move you out by one square and just have a look. So we probably want to try and attach it to the end that has the... Let's see, that has the mini fridge on it. So not where the actual cooker is. So that's the kitchen unit, that's that. Let's see if we can install it here. So what would we need to install the uh, other frame? We would need to have a torch of some kind. Yeah, makes sense, <laughs> makes sense. We could, we could, hear me out for a second. I mean, we could just try wiring for now and just see if it works. So we've got some wiring there. We can go ahead and install a number of different things on there. We can't install the vehicle welding rig. Let's just have a look because I think, hmm, no, it might just actually have to go on a proper frame. Yeah, it does seem we're pretty limited by what we can put on that. Okay, I mean, that's fair. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't think there was any more gas at the other location. So I think, I think for now, we still, unfortunately, we still need to make some kind of welder. Unless we could take the vehicle welding rig apart for a moment and use that <laughs> just as it is. Let's see. What would you give us, vehicle welding rig, if we were to disassemble you? Um, it would give us welding components and the copper wire, which... Yeah, the welding component kit. I had a look into this just before. So a welding component kit is made up of two makeshift arc welders and an arc welder. So we could take the welding component kit. So we could kind of try and take it apart. There's a chance that we could lose some of that stuff though. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Let's just go ahead and store that in our inventory for now. We're going to clamber over here, and we're just going to have a look. If I were to disassemble this, okay, it's just doing it. 
Usually it tells you the percentage chance of you being able to succeed at something like that. The fact that we're going into darkness as well isn't good, but it does look like we were able to succeed at doing that. Okay, that's that's something. <laughs> now, I wouldn't mind having a reading light. Whether or not we actually still have one around us, I'm not sure. Um, let's just do a quick inventory search there and over here. Read. We do have a reading light. We'll go ahead and just pick that up for now. And yeah, we even still have the hotkey for it. So turn on that reading light. And yeah, so we should have some items on the floor here now. Let's have a look. We've got our uh, welding component kit. So we can try and take that apart to get a welder. The welder, we should be able to just charge or just load up with batteries and then be able to use that there. So we're either going to get... Okay, it is going to give us... One soldering iron and one arc welder from this. It's going to take 10 minutes for us to do. That should be possible. If I screw this up, it'll set us back, but it's okay. If it does, I will do that stuff off camera. <laughs> Come on, Dusk, you've got this. I believe in you. So, did we pick it up? That is the question. Welding component kit, here it is. We're going to go ahead and disassemble. Come on, Dusk, you're good, you're good, you're good at this stuff, you can do it, I believe in you. Let's let that big save roll on through, and see. Okay, it looks like we were successful at that, let's have a look. We have a arc welder, fantastic. Okay, so, compatible magazines, plutonium batteries, all kinds of different medium batteries, etc. Good, good, good. Okay, so we have an arc welder now. <sighs> Whether or not we'll be able to build this again, remains to be seen because I think we might need welders to make them as well so we're going to go ahead and reload you we're going to put a high capacity medium battery into it now we have a welder good which means that we can attach a frame to this so <laughs> before we do that I don't think we have any more 10 inch wheels and I don't think we could just make the 10 inch wheels no I don't think so well, that being the case, do we have any casters left? We do. They're a little damaged. They're four inch casters. <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works. We don't need this thing to go far. We just need to be able to wheel it in and out and that's it. So let's have a look. We're going to go ahead and try and install it on this end here and we can install uh, a frame. Fantastic. Brilliant. That's what we want to do. It's going to use a hundred charges of our arc welder to be able to do this. We're going to just make it that frame there and we've got it installed brilliant so we can install a whole heap of things on there now what kind of wheels can we install on there looks like casters are a go <laughs> so sure we'll go ahead and put those casters on there can we repair them real quick it's going to take 50 charges that's fine we've got some wheels on there it's charged well it's it's repaired rather now what else do we want to go on here we could install the storage battery in the swappable storage battery case that's good, but we wanted to get the vehicle welding rig on here. <laughs> Let's just have a look at welding rig and see what we need to attach it. Okay, just bolt turning. So if we start to work towards making that, we should be okay. <laughs> yeah, right, we're very hungry at the moment, so we can uh, probably look at having a little bit of a munch. I think we had a whole heap of food that came with us. Uh, hmm, did we now? Did we now? Yes, we did. We did. Okay, so we'll go ahead and activate the chili beans here. A activate the heat pack, heat up those sweet chili beans. And it does seem to not like that, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll ignore that for now. And we'll just go ahead and start to eat peanut butter spread this time. Fantastic. Can we spread the peanut butter spread onto our cracker? We can't. That's okay. We're effectively doing that by eating it this way. Okay, we're satisfied. Nice. Okay, so heading back over towards here, we need to have a look at making a vehicle welding rig. I think we need to make the components first. Welding component kit. Okay, so that is our next course of action. Welding component kit. We need to have a arc welder. And we also, yeah, we just need to have an arc welder. I wonder, I think it needs to be uncharged. Oh yeah, we got an arc welder here on the on the seat. So let's go ahead and unload the arc welder that's just chilling out here on the seat. We'll go ahead and grab that, just bring it up into our hands, have a look at welding. Yes, we can make it. Okay, brilliant. Okay, 10 minutes, we shouldn't fail at doing this. And there we go, we've put it back together. So sometimes you have to take things apart to be able to advance. Now, a vehicle 
welding rig needs does does need to have an arc welder <laughs> oh, god damn it okay can we make can we make a makeshift arc welder easily enough if only we had 20 charges i'm sure hang on i'm sure that we still have some charge in one of the canisters that we had in here i i'm i'm near 100 percent sure that we did so everything that we brought back yesterday will have been sorted out into into here somewhere so let's just do an all-around search and we're going to search for so it's an acetylene welder that we're after the acetylene torch okay do we not have any left because i was sure that we had just a tiny bit left in one of them welding tank small welding tank god damn it i don't think we do i'm gonna have a look around over here as well no <laughs> it does not seem to be the oh maybe we've got we've got two empty tanks up there <laughs> god damn it yep oh no that's the pressurized fuel tanks okay right um so unfortunate yes very unfortunate let's go ahead and just turn off our light for a second ah <sighs> wow one step forward many steps back so for us to be able to make a makeshift arc welder four power converters we have two so we only need two more power converters for us to be able to do this that might be possible we do have a number of, of electronics in here i'm just gonna have to go through them and figure out what will give us a power converter the acetylene gas machine does uh but that's something that can give us more acetylene in the future whether or not we want to take this apart now i would ideally not do it but i'd never say never i'm gonna go through this all and i will be back after six power converters okay so the advanced ups maybe we take a ups apart i feel like that's a good trade because <laughs> i don't i don't know what else has power converters in them it's something that's there sometimes sometimes it's not okay they're power converters in these geiger counters we should be able to get two from those let's just go ahead and take them apart if we can <laughs> all right we don't need geiger counters do we no not at all disassemble take it apart and we're just using our reading light now and i think our reading light just turned off so we're going to go ahead and reload that sucker with a ultralight battery fantastic look at that light brilliant okay so going over to the other geiger counter that we have we're going to disassemble you and that should be everything we need to make this makeshift welder oh boy the steps we go through all right there we go 30 minutes for us to do this we are tired i'm gonna wait until we get really tired before we try and go to sleep you know what maybe it would just be better for us to sleep now it is 11 30. let's have something to drink first do we have we've got some bone broth just chilling around okay let's go ahead and drink that i don't think that's showing up as being in a container because of weird things so we'll go ahead and just um we're very hungry all right We've got a whole heap of mutagen just hanging out we've got some bleach we're not going to drink any of that um <laughs> hmm oh no we're, we're satisfied in slack now so i guess sometimes we do need to move for for that to update okay seems to be the case how is our arm looking it is bandaged uh it is disinfected good so that should that should be okay we're gonna leave the we're gonna leave everything open tonight and i've just realized that bridget we don't have a bed for you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move the sleeping bag just onto the chair so that you can sleep in that because i think we're fine oh we're back to being very hungry again you know what let's just go to sleep or try to we are not going to set alarm we're trying to fall asleep and i think we'll get there eventually we toss and turn we're tired we're going to continue trying to and we're not going to let you ask again and there we go we fall asleep so i'll be back once at dusk awakes and uh, yeah we'll see what the morning brings and we have awoken bridget 
I don't know if you were standing there the whole night just watching us or if you did actually go to sleep, but uh, well, I hope you had a good one. Let's go and have ourselves a little bit to eat. We will just use some of the uh, packs that are on the ground here. We'll use the chili beans. It's a little bit of a mess at the moment. I won't deny that, but uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Things will look better once we kind of settle in properly. We'll have that. We'll have our cracker. We will go ahead and have our cracker, cracker, and then the peanut butter as well. Thank you. So sometimes it seems that we don't eat them, which is a little strange, but you know, like the cheese spread down there. Apparently we didn't eat that either. Sometimes you need to like a double confirm it. Oh, I feel quite full and a bit sluggish. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess I need to pay attention. <laughs> Apparently that... That had already updated. We've overeaten there, so I need to be careful that we don't do that. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. It is a new dawn. It's a new day. What are we going to do right now? Well, we have we have what we need. We have this makeshift arc welder. We're going to go ahead and reload that so that it has what we need in it. Makeshift arc welder. We're going to go and put uh, a medium battery into you. And we should have an arc welder around here still as well, or rather the welding components. Make sure for welder, pick you up. Do we have the welding component kit on us? Ah, uh, no, but it is around here somewhere. <laughs> welding component kit, fantastic. All right, examine that damn vehicle and have a look over here. We're going to try and see if we can install this thing here. All right, what are we missing? Oh, we have the welding component kit. Now we need to make the vehicle welding kit, right. Vehicle welding rig, it's going to take 50 minutes for us to do, it's going to take some of our charges to be able to make it, but, uh, well, we smash through that time before long, and we have what we need. <laughs> We've got it back to its, uh, its true form. We'll go ahead and just pick up that bad boy, wander on over here, and look at installing that thing here. Welding rig, fantastic just like that and the reason why I'm trying to install a welding rig on here is so that we don't have to worry about charging our welder we have a great big battery on this thing and let's see we can install we can install the storage battery case there we're going to install the swappable storage battery case or should we just plug it in we're just going to go ahead and put it in sure yeah why not storage battery we're going to use the arc welder nearby yeah, yeah we are. Okay, 14 minutes until full at this stage. So we've got a storage battery in there. It's uh, <laughs> it's very full. So we've got a whole heap of energy now. So this fridge is going to stay nice and chill. Uh, good times for us. Good times. Let's just double check and see how we're looking. Uh, control multiple electronics. Turn the fridge on. I think it did turn off overnight, which is unfortunate. And the fridge should just be in here. No, it is over here, I guess, then. Get items. Do we have anything in here that is... Hmm. On what square is the fridge, I wonder? It is here. And it does have some things in it, but nothing perishable. Okay, well, we can put perishable food in there. Um, you know, it's, it's working now. <laughs> and we'll just go ahead and pull this thing into here. Can we? Oh, it is colliding with the desk. Why is that? Oh, oh, it pulls weird. Oh, okay, right. So, oh, how? Okay, <laughs> this is, this is weird to move, and I think it's because of the freaking caster wheels. There's nothing to grab there. Can I grab you there? Okay, there we go. We got you a little bit closer. That's kind of, as, I think that's within range for us to use, I, I think. Let's just go ahead and unload the makeshift arc welder that we have. We could take that apart, but honestly, I think just keeping that thing around will be worthwhile. Right, so at this stage, we need to have a look at what we need to do metalworking. So the easiest thing for us to do to figure that out is by going into armor and then finding some kind of metal piece of armor that we could, uh, you know, potentially make. So we're going to go right down here. Let's see, I'm pretty sure we can make all kinds of like plate mail and all the rest, so let's just do a quick search for plate. Okay, so ornamental plate armor. So for us to be able to do this, we need a number of things. Um, we need to have some kind of forge or a torch. So, all right, we're going to need an electric forge. We need a suede and die set as well. 
Okay, we have metal tongs, we've got uh, chiseling, we also need an anvil. So I think for us to make us wage and die set, we need an anvil as well. So I think an anvil is probably going to be the first thing that we need to try and make. We'll just check on swage and see. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so an anvil is going to be what we're after. An electric forge will be nice as well, but um, let's just have a look. Vehicle forge rig also good uh, but we need to make an electric forge first we just need heating elements and a power converter easy enough for us to do heating elements we can get from taking a snow overpass boom done just like that uh, we're going to need to try and get a whole heap of scrap steel eventually a whole heap of scrap metal or lumps of steel we can get that by going to maybe the junkyard that's over here yeah, small scrapyard it's nice and close fantastic that's definitely an option for us and well, we can go into some of the houses and get some of the heating elements as well. So, yeah, that is something that we will do. But first, can we make an anvil? Okay, so for us to make an anvil, we need to have a crucible. Um, it, yeah, and I think for us to make a crucible, we still need to have an electric forge. I feel like that's probably going to be the first thing. Uh, but let's have a look. We do want to make sure that we can actually make a crucible. Um, so we can only make a clay crucible. Hmm... Finding a crucible would be nice, because I don't want to make a kiln just for this. But we could also do that as well. As you can see, it is an involved process. There are many steps involved. Uh, we can make an electric kiln easily enough. We just need scrap metal, some heating elements, and all the rest. So I feel like that's what we're going to be doing. Now, we're going to be heading across towards that town. Just do a little bit of light scrap work. So let's go ahead and close up these doors. Bridget close yours for you um we're not going to worry about um working on the vehicle i think it's in fine condition at the moment and we should have everything that we need to be able to achieve this so we're going to start to head off in that direction it should take us next to no time hopefully this time though not uh encountering any boulders that would be nice i nearly made it the entire way like i was very very close um we are going to step on the accelerator a bit here though so that we can make it across here pretty fast it does mean that sometimes we don't have the necessary reaction time to move out the way of a boulder but for the most part we should be able to cruise along without too much trouble you can see a little bulldog roaming around the fields here and i believe that was a bit too much of a boulder wow 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 okay yeah let's uh let's go ahead and slow down <laughs> too fast too fast too furious okay so i think if we stop around about here we should be looking pretty good and i don't think there's going to be too much in the way of uh dead activity around here because we cleared this out towards the start you know what let's have a quick little look in the garage that's up here as well just to see if there's anything that we might have uh, missed out on i don't think there was um, copper tubing, a funnel, okay. Hmm, there are some things around us. Let's just have a quick look. Welding and metallurgy, lots of welding masks. And, uh, yeah, there's a freaking arc welder just hanging out here. I mean, obviously, that was an option for us to be able to go and try and do that. Um, I'm just searching for weld. Let's not do that. Yeah, so, let's see. There's an air jack. I feel like I want to take that. Um, everything else can probably stay. The two metal we do need a tank like that that's okay um i think we actually did manage to move that into our inventory wildly enough yeah anything else interesting automotive filters we've got bells wood saw yeah we can uh, pass by the rest lots of lots of drive belts and all the rest okay cool we'll take that drop it back down in our vehicle before moving into the scrapyard to see what we can uh, scrap from there. And you know what? I think we've forgotten to bring a a shovel with us, which would give us a whole heap of different kinds of scrap. Um, an entrenching tool, which uh, that is a mistake on my behalf. So let's see. Drop off the ingots that I forgot to last time. <laughs> clever, clever. And what else do we have? We've got the makeshift arc welder on us as well. We definitely did not need to be carrying that. And the air jack, yes. Drop you in here. Okay, let's see, what do we have? Yeah, so for a lot of the stuff we are going to need 
to use a shovel to be able to take it apart, which is uh, frustrating because that was <laughs> that's a really good chance for us to get what we need from there. We could find a shovel in the town here. There is a chance. Yeah, it's a slim chance, but there is a chance. Um, where are soldiers when you need them? Because they always have entrenching tools on them. Yeah. Well, look, we're not that far from home. We could actually probably just run the distance back uh, and <laughs> and be back before we know it. But we're going to drive, and I'm going to drive carefully. Try to. Yeah. All right. I'll be back here before any of you know it. And just like that, before you know it, I am back. And we didn't have any <laughs> any troubles this time. It was nice and easy for us to do that. Ah, oh dear. We're going to go ahead and uh, we don't need to wield it. We're going to have our baton out for now, just in case. We assume a practical combat stance. And let's just see. We're going to start clearing some of this metal wreckage. And you know what? We're not getting anything. <laughs> Uh, I, okay, I guess, <laughs> damn it, well that was kind of off naught, um, yeah, we're not getting any scrap from that, so I guess, well, that's a thing, uh, but we will get some of the things that we need from taking apart some of the appliances that are here, so let's see, what are we going to get, we're going to get scrap metal, great, fantastic, um, we're going to get those heating elements as well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sort them out from uh, each other. So we're going to take the chunks of steel, the copper wiring, pretty much we can take everything actually now that I look at it. Even the pilot's light is going to be useful so we'll go ahead and just kind of have that out in that direction for now. We've got another one over here so we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Doesn't take us too long to be able to do that. And uh, yeah this is just a good way for us to get a whole heap of uh, little bits and pieces that we can make use of. Um, the dryer is a maybe We'll just go ahead and clear this path down towards this other stove. The broken mirror we shall avoid for now. And let's see, anything in that desk? No. I guess I'm not surprised. And drag you up towards there. Okay, how are we looking for other th stuff and things? I guess we could have a look at the dryers to see what we can get in there. We're going to take this computer apart. Um, we cannot take you apart. Interesting. We can smash you though. And that's going to give us, yeah, some raw materials, which we'll go ahead and make use of. Dryer, we shall take you apart and see what we can get from you. What does the trum tumble dryer have for us? A whole heap of things, actually. Um, you don't have any heating elements, but you do have a small electric motor, which is nice. We'll go ahead and grab you. And uh, we might as well take the other ones apart while we're here, because it's just doesn't really take long at all. 15 minutes is, uh, well, it's well worth it. I do want to have a look at taking apart the vending machine here as well. Looks like we'll just have to smash it. I don't want to damage our thing any more than it already is. You know what? I don't think it's going to fall apart, and that's fine. <laughs> Up towards here, lots of copper piping. And we will, yeah, we'll take you apart because you're going to give us some metal sheeting, I think. Maybe some pipes. Yes, let's see. Yeah, nice. Same thing here, deconstruct that furniture. I think we are going to need uh, a bit more heating elements than what we've grabbed so far, so we'll just need to make sure that we uh, stop by some others. Uh, we don't want to smash, we want to swap positions. I'm going to grab that wiring while we're here, bring that up towards there, and I guess we could have a look to see what's in those actual um, vending machines. Anything of interest. It's empty, and that is also empty. Yeah. It makes sense that you can't disassemble a vending machine because then you could just get the stuff that's inside there. Um, you know what? Let's take apart you as well. Deconstruct you. Take what we can. Mostly metal sheeting. Yes. Thank you very much. Swap positions with you, Bridget. And we'll haul this stuff up towards the car. It's going to take us a little while to be able to do that. That's fine. We're moving items here. It's taken us a few minutes at a time to be able to do that. But before long, we are here. I'm so glad that hauling is a thing. Before we could haul, it was a uh, it was a mission to be able to do any of this stuff. All right, move that all across. Fantastic. I'm going to say that I'm going to mark this as explored now. Um, I think I already had it marked as explored, actually. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let's see. We could just stop by one of the houses have a look there yeah sure 
Obviously, we have the lab that's just kind of beneath here. I mean, there's definitely going to be another stove in here. And we've got some chicks hanging out in here. Hello, chicks. Alright, let's go ahead and deconstruct this thing. Got enough light to be able to do it too. And, um, yeah, we don't want everything from over there, so we'll just take the spare parts. Thank you. Lots of sheet metal. Just the... Oh, three heating elements. Okay, that's good. Alright. Drag that back out the front here. Um, this is the only house? No, there is another house. It's like a duplex. Right. Let's not step into the raspberry bush. Can we actually harvest you yet? We can. Brilliant. I wonder when we'll be able to harvest our apples. I think we should look into that. I think it's apples at our orchard. The stereo system. Might be worth us installing one at home, actually, because, um... Well, then we can just have sweet, sweet radio. Um, I mean, yes, it is noise, but, um... Yeah, I'm not as concerned about that. Right the second. Maybe we should be. And... Another lot... Taken. Fantastic. So, we should have a decent supply at this stage. I think it's probably worth us having a look to see what the actual amount of heating elements that we have is. Because, uh... Well, we don't want to be heading back here. We, we want to be good for a while. Okay. Store you here for now. And let's go ahead and transfer everything across. Like so. Uh, move all, thank you. Now, let's see. What do we have? Um, heating elements, 14. Pretty decent. I wouldn't mind maybe just one more. So let's go into one of the other homes up here and look at taking the oven apart. We are warm, but we're doing okay. Yep, that's a big save. All right. Let's get you moving. Just take that pot away for now. This is a very deserted place. Imagine that uh, Bridget is just keeping an eye out on the surroundings. Uh, let's have a drink if we can. Um, hmm. What happened to our canteen? It is empty currently. Okay. Well, that's okay. We don't need a colander. Hey, Bridget. You're just hanging out outside. Oh, that kind of creeped me out for a second then. That was the curtains. The window's open. But <laughs> it's kind of sounded a little bit like a creeper hiss for a second. <laughs> Set alarm systems off in my mind. All right, let's go ahead and move them all across. That's another four heating elements. I'm happy with that number. That's a that's a good amount. Um, Bridget, yeah, go and go and just open all the doors, huh? Sure. All right, we are going to rock on back home. I believe we have everything we need for the time being, so I will see you all once we arrive back there. And we have arrived back home in one piece. Fantastic. We will do a little bit of repairing to the vehicle uh, before long. But for now, we'll just go ahead and get the stuff shifted out. Bridget's going to try and help by jumping in the vehicle. Thanks, Bridget. We appreciate it. All right, let's get that moving across. And that's a whole heap of stuff. Okay, so we could probably do a little bit of an organization around here. Um, yeah, we kind of need to. <laughs> uh, I am a little worried about having the food so close, though, because I think we'll just start shifting that around. I think for now we're okay. We don't need to worry. So let's just go ahead and just haul the stuff down here. Have it all in one big piece for now. And you know what? I think, I think we do have some extra water. Um in a tank which uh, isn't here <laughs> was it in the kitchen I wonder big 60 litre tank apparently we're keeping stuff there whole heap of food in here as well which is good um, anything we can unload we're looking for clean water or just water in general middle tank of water okay it is in the display, display rack okay right um, do we want to take you along with us? We could just take the plastic bottle of clean water. I'm just going to go ahead and consume it. We're very hungry at this stage, so we could just go ahead and activate one of the many MREs that are here. We're going to use one of the four meatball marinaras. Uh, we've got some rotten cat food and dog food. <clears throat> we should probably do something about that. And let's see. You are the one that we want. Ah, lots of food, so we'll just go ahead and move that away for now. <laughs> Make this a little easier. Eat the raspberries. 
Eat that. Nice. Eat it, please. Okay. Eat that. Eat the cracker. Okay. Satisfied. Nice. And we can just go ahead and move this stuff into here for now as well. We'll deal with that eventually. But for now, we're going to sit down and we're going to try and see if we can make ourselves an anvil. Uh, we need to do the crucible first, don't we? Yes, the crucible and or the forge. So let's have a look. A uh, charcoal forge we can make. For us to make a vehicle forge, we need the electric. And we need another power converter. Damn it. Power converters. Okay, so what else do we have in here that we can get a power converter from? Probably the coffee maker, really. Let's have a look and see. If we disassemble you, we will get not a power converter. Okay, so I'm not sure what determines about whether or not they would, because like the handheld game system, for example, doesn't have a power converter. Hot plate might. Let's see. Yeah, it gives us heating elements and all the rest, but uh, not that wonderful power converter. We can get one from you though, right? No, we can't, but we can get one from the turret. I would rather keep the turret. The laptop, we can probably take you apart as well. We do get a power converter from you. Um, you are our only laptop, so I would be ambivalent about doing that. But let's see, I'm sure there's something else in here that we can take apart. A radio. A radio must have one, right? A power converter? No. No, no, no. Hmm. Shaving kit isn't as necessary. <laughs> Not gonna get anything from that either. Okay. <clears throat> Two-way radio. And... No, amplifier circuits and all the rest. Um, actually, I think... Hmm. I think you need amplifier circuits to be able to make a power converter. I mean, look, I can get one. I can probably take apart this UPS here and that'll be fine. Yeah, let's see. Four power converters. That's good. That's grand. We'll go ahead and pick up the USP. UPS, rather. <laughs> God damn it, USP. Um, okay, and that is going to be Ender Tools. Then we will disassemble you. Take you apart for the things that we need. And we're going to make ourselves an electric forge. Okay, an electric forge. It's going to take three hours for us to be able to do this, so wish me all the best. We're going to use some of this scrap metal that we've got, we've got quite a bit, and we will use the arc welder that is nearby, which should be the vehicle arc welder. Yeah, surely. But that is quite a bit of charge that we'd be using from that thing, although I think we have a ridiculous amount of power in there currently, so we should be fine. Uh, it's getting on towards the evening. We're probably going to lose sight here. I'll have to uh, look at getting the reading lights up and running. Yes, let's go ahead and activate that. And we'll go ahead and activate the crafting that we're doing and see if we can continue it. Um, we might have to pick it up. Craft as long as possible. Um, work on craft. Yes. Yes, we shall. And there we go, we have ourselves an electric forge. Brilliant. Okay, we're hungry, so let's have something to eat. Uh, we could go for the dessert pack. Yeah, sure, we'll have dessert now. We'll have the cookie, the chocolate bar, or not the chocolate bar, chocolate candy, chocolate bar, chocolate bar. It's weird that we have to try like multiple times sometimes to eat. We're still very hungry. I'll give that a second to change. Um, we did just have a bit to eat. And now let's have a look to see if we can make the other variation in Forge. A vehicle Forge. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, we've got everything we need. We've got a lot of solder. We've got a lot of copper wire. And we just need some more power converters. So we can always take apart more of the bits and pieces. Okay, so this thing is getting to be a little, a little long. It's a little unruly. Um, can we install it? where there's already something there, like where the mini fridge is, for example. No, we can't. And th that kind of makes sense. I, w I would imagine that we, oh, we need, we also need to be able to see it. So let's make sure that we uh, go ahead, uh, get items. We will get the vehicle forge room. Just store that there. <clears throat> okay. All right, examine the vehicle. Let's have a look and see what we can install. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to have to install it 
on another part of this, which means that we will need to install another frame, which is doable. Yeah. Steel RAM. So we've got steel plated. We need to make ourselves a, uh, just a frame. And we should be able to do that. I don't know if some of the other things are going to be close enough. Uh, possibly. We can make wooden frames. I don't know if we want to have a wooden frame here. Frame loom. Uh, to weave cloth sheets. Wow, that's very cool. Um, we could just make a wooden frame. I mean, there's, there's no rules here. Go ahead, uh, put it down and start working. Yeah, there we go. We've made ourselves a wooden frame to go ahead and whack onto the end of this. Wooden frame, just like so. And, oh right, it's on that side. Okay, I see. And we'll go ahead and install the forge on top of that. Yeah, ideally. Mounted electric forge. Sure. And that doesn't have any wheels underneath of it. <laughs> uh, making caster wheels is, is, is a fairly difficult process. I don't know if I'm going to be able to just haul this thing, but right now that's kind of okay. <laughs> um, believe me, we will have a kind of proper setup for this thing uh, eventually. What I'm probably going to do is try and have it just down along one side of here and just have wires running outside. I think we should be able to close that down on top of the wires. I guess we'll find that out though, won't we? Yeah. But we have ourselves a forge. Now, still for us to make an anvil, we do need to have a crucible. And we don't know, we don't have the necessary uh, skill, I think, to make a regular crucible. No. So we still don't have that. We're going to have to make ourselves an electric kiln. So let's have a look at kilns and see what we need to do. We can make an electric kiln. It's going to take three hours again. Well, this is what we're here for. There's a lot of heating elements, but it's going to be worth it because we'll have everything that we need. Uh, and then we can turn that into a vehicle kiln. Uh, we will need to have another power converter, but we can do that as well. Okay, that's going to be nearly all of our scrap metal. We'll use some of the chunks of steel. Yeah, that's a lot. I hope we're going to have enough to make an anvil now. And we're going to run out of reading lamp power. Yep. Let's go ahead and reload you. Ultralight battery. There we go. Fantastic. Go back over here. Work on craft. Yes. Work on that kiln. Ah, oh, this is, this is, uh, yeah. I knew this was going to take us a while to do. And I'm glad that we decided to do metalworking first. Um... Yeah, it's it's a bit of a process to get this stuff up and running, but it's a it's an it's a fun process, especially when we have most of the things around. So for us to be able to make the vehicle mounted uh, kiln, or the vehicle kiln, or whatever it was called, vehicle kiln, we need two power converters. So let's go back into our UPS storage over here. And I know taking apart UPSs might not be the smartest idea, but it's the most efficient one for us to do right now because it does actually give us quite a few power converters. We can find more of them in the future. It's okay. It's what they're here for. All right. Now, looking at this, we're still hearing birds. It's 2.20 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we're just working through. We're working through this. We are very thirsty at this stage, so we should probably look at having something to drink. We could have something fun to drink, though. Candy, how are you doing? Let's have a look. Um, hmm. What do we want to drink? Lemon lime soda. Yes, please. Lemon lime soda still thirsty okay let's see grape drink seems nice still thirsty okay we'll go for another grape drink oh we didn't drink it hmm drink that grape grape that drink uh well we're satisfied but we're still thirsty I guess it doesn't give us a huge amount of quench. Actually, yeah, it really doesn't give us that much at all. What's going to give us the most quench right now? The atomic energy drink. Probably not what we want. Um, yeah, let's see. Our oh, sports drink. There we go. And I think we actually did drink that. Quite full, but sluggish. Okay, so we went full quite quickly there. Probably should avoid doing that where we can. Okay, so... With that, we have, I think, everything that we need. Let's just jump back over here and go back to kilns. And we're going to make ourselves a vehicle kiln. It's going to take 20 minutes. 
just is attaching a few little bits and pieces so that we can attach it to this uh, growing train, which is, yeah, maybe not the most efficient way for us to do this, but you know, it's okay. We're going to examine the vehicle. Um, we're probably going to need to make ourselves another frame. So let's just have a look. Can we make a wooden frame easily enough again? Foldable light frame? Probably not what we're after, really. Um, we could just take one of these apart to get some planks, and I'm fine with doing that. So we'll go ahead and deconstruct that. Get the planks that we need, and just get this thing underway. This isn't the cleanest kind of construction that you can do. This is more the faster kind for YouTube's sake. So let's go back to frames and we're going to make ourselves a wooden frame. We could go for light, but that does require us to use ropes. We don't like that. We've got a ton of nails. Let's make sure that we use them. So this time we're going to go ahead and install that frame on this side, I think. Um, yes, wooden frame, just like so. And we shall install the kiln on top of there. Uh, where are you? Mounted electric kiln. Okay, so it's getting further and further away from us, which isn't good. But I think because we're close to the vehicle, we can just use all of the things along it. And our reading lamp has gone out again. So we'll go ahead and reload that. Um, the sun will be rising soon. There we go. We've got ourselves a kiln here now as well. So the next thing we need to look at is making a crucible. So for that, we are going to need clay. Five lumps of clay. And the best place for us to get that is just up here by the river. So let's go have ourselves a little bit of a wander. Um, we can see pretty far and we still have our entrenching tool on us. So let's make our way up towards there just to see if we can find some clay. Um, probably we'll need to have our lamp on just so we can make out the color variation in the ground. Now it's sounding like night. The wolves and stuff in the distance. It's nice. Okay, so let's just head along this riverbank and eventually we should see something like that. That is clay. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead and I think, do we want to dig a pit here? Or maybe if we just activate the entrenching tool. Um, hmm. Dig a pit here. Ah, right. Whoops. I did that wrong. Yeah. Let's move all that stuff over there. We've got lots of rocks and soil. Um, we want to dig a pit here, and I think that will give us the clay. Entrenching tool. Yes, we want to go ahead and dig a pit here and just put the stuff over here behind us. All right, did you give us clay? Uh, no, we just got soil. So I think we just destroyed the clay. So I did that wrong. That's not how you do it. <laughs> Um, I think there might be another way for us to get extract clay. There we go. All right, 22 minutes for us to do this. We're going to go ahead and extract the clay from there. Let's see. We only need five clay. How are we looking from that? Ten lumps of clay. Brilliant. That's exactly what we need. Well, that's double what we need, but that's fine. We'll make our way back down towards home and get this thing made. All right, it should, you should be here eventually. There you are, Bridget. Okay. All right, so jump back into the hot seat. Let's have a look. We want to make ourselves a crucible and sure enough, we can. It's gonna take um, some of our clean water to be able to do it. We are going to continue crafting. We're gonna push through this dead tiredness because, uh, well, <laughs> I promised that we were gonna get this up and running today and uh, we are going to get that done. There's the crucible. It is light outside. It's getting there slowly but surely. We might end up just passing out on the ground here, but that's okay. It's all part of the cataclysm experience. Okay, leave that reading lamp on for a little bit longer. We've got a crucible. We've got a kiln. We've got, we've got everything. So at this stage, can we make an anvil? Do we have everything we need? We do not have the necessary amount of steel. So we've got chunks of steel, 160 of 19 or lumps of steel, 40 of four. Oh right, so we've only got 19 chunks of steel, we've only got four lumps of steel. So we do need to have a lot more steel. Okay, so one way that we can do that, and it's a, uh, well, it's a rough way. This is a very nice looking flatbed truck, but we could get parts from it. And we could also get parts from here as well. So what we're gonna do is I, I'm trying to remember if we have a sledgehammer around here at all. What kind of like our heaviest tool is. So let's just do an all around search and I'm just going to search for sledge. No, we don't have a sledge. What kind of hammers do we have? 
We've got a Halligan Bar, which is pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick up the Halligan Bar. Yeah, I think that's the uh, right call for now. And we're going to go ahead and wield that Halligan Bar. We're going to use that to just smash up this vehicle a bit. <laughs> okay, that's taking a lot longer than I would have thought. There we go. Okay, so what did we get from that? We got a chunk of steel, a lump of steel, and a chunk of steel. Okay, so that was the first kind of test to see what we'd get from doing that. The next thing that we could try and do is actually try and just take parts of the vehicle off. So if we have a look at the frames, if we take the frames off, which we need to disassemble everything else first, which I'm kind of not wanting to do that, I guess we'll remove the hatch. We'll go ahead and remove this frame. Okay, let's just have a look. We've got steel frames. Can we break you apart into parts? Break you apart? Yes, we can. It takes about 45 minutes to be able to get a lump of steel by disassembling this. So I feel like that's probably going to be more efficient than us just bashing. Bashing takes a while, and I don't think we get as much from it. Um, we still get some stuff, though. So we'll go ahead and just um, haul all of this together. Um, I'll just go ahead and shift you down to here. Thank you, thank you. Okay, pick all of you up. And as for disassembling this, how are we going to do that? Do we just cut you into pieces? Do we use metal sawing to be able to do that? What is the process? Um, and what happened to that frame? Steel frame, disassemble. Okay, we can. All right, it is definitely possible for us to do that. Nice, and that's 20 lumps of steel. So that's probably the best way for us to do that. Just by picking this up over here, going through, and just disassembling it. Now, I'm pretty sure you've got chunks and you've got lumps of steel, right? Let's just see how much we have now. Because ideally, I want to try and make an anvil before the end of today. If it's possible, that'd be amazing. Uh, so, let's see. Right, we have... F okay, so we do have... We are getting lumps of steel here, so... Going down the frame route is the right kind of choice. Um, let's see if we can't take a little bit more off here. Okay. Alright. We could look at taking a wheel off as well. The thing is, all of that's just going to take us a while to do. It doesn't take too long, really, but it's... Hmm. Yeah, we'll go ahead and start with this stuff, because it's in good condition. Oh, we need to have a jack. Okay, so no. Stuff that. Um... Yeah, look, we could go ahead and just remove that broken door, and then remove this frame. Get more that way. Remove the door. Remove the frame. Uh, remove this part would split the vehicle. Oh, I see, so we can't do that. That, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, we can take off from other areas, though, so remove the windshield. Remove the frame. Okay, so the frames that are there, can we go ahead and just, yeah, we can disassemble everything once. So I want to go and just shift the glass off of this square, and, well, the other lumps that we have so far. And then we're going to go butcher, disassemble everything once. So it's going to take us a while to do, but it's a faster way to do it. Okay, we failed to recover some steel from that, and it's because they are quite damaged. Drop the lumps of steel in the dirt. Fantastic, 40, brilliant. Okay, so we'll go ahead and bring all of the stuff down with us. And just see how we're looking after that. Stop hauling. Anvil, how close are we? We can bloody do it. It's going to take four hours to be able to do it. And I tell you what, we do need to sleep before we do. We have everything we need to make the anvil. So we have successfully got our metal working up and running. It doesn't look pretty, but it works. And that's the main thing. I do need to shuffle things around here. And I'm probably going to do that off camera. So when we return next, we're going to have a very nice looking workshop. At least that's the idea. Let's see if we can execute that one. For now, though, that's going to wrap us up for this episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a like or a comment to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.